both much more informed presentations than mine, so, uh, and it will show. But I'll, I'll try to say something that's somewhat useful, perhaps. Uh, let me start by, let me go backwards, in the sense that I want to start by talking about the, uh, the impact evaluation results and then talk about the, the credit elasticities. Um, so I think what's striking about this study is how much of this, the, the basic pattern in that, that comes out here is um, reflected in, as I said, many other studies by other people in other countries, ours but many other studies. The basic pattern that somehow businesses grow but profits don't, that uh, durables grow, that temptations would go, go down, these are things that seem like very at the very core of what microfinance is doing. And in some ways, I, I feel that we're sort of ig a bit ignoring in the welfare analysis, when we talk about whether this is good or bad, we're a bit ignoring those facts. We're sort of then going back to saying who's get, whose consumption is going down. And that's, at some level, that seems conceptually uh, somewhat, uh, you know, kind of lo loose, because you might imagine that, for example, uh, just a very obvious fact. Uh, imagine that, take the people, I'm not saying at all that this is what's happening, but take the people whose consumption goes down as a result of get, taking a loan. Now, is that good news or bad news? Well, that, I mean, it would be always better to have more consumption, but are they worse off as a result than the control group? And that's a question of whether or not how we value the uh, what they have done with the money. So imagine that I have to buy a TV, and the TV is costs six hundred dollars. I have three hundred dollars in a loan from Compartamos. What do I do? How do I find the other three hundred dollars? Well, I maybe I cut back on consumption. Maybe I stop uh, buying things I would have bought. I or put it the other way around, um, maybe I, in repaying the loan, maybe I get $600 in a loan, and then in order to repay the loan, I sacrifice many things I consume. Some of those are temptation goods. Others are perhaps not what we will call temptation goods, but maybe we, I spend less on tasty food. I buy cheaper food. Um, am I worse off or better off as a result of that? That's a question, that, I mean, without actually having some way of, of welfare integrating the purchase of durables with those other things, it's hard to have a view on what's going on, uh, whether this is good or bad for people. I, uh, so the, when you say that certain groups are potentially worse off, that I think is exactly the right question to ask, but I think we need to, we, we need to kind of take into account what is the process that people are going through. They're going through a process of potentially transforming their consumption. They were spending, they had no option of getting a TV. So, you know, when they wanted to do something fun, they were going out and spending money on, let's say, eating out somewhere or buying some food on the street that was look tasty. And maybe that's not, that's where they're cutting back. If they're cutting back there, is that a welfare loss or a welfare gain? Is, there, is it that the fact that they have now they own the TV, which makes them very happy, um, and they have sacrificed something else. Is that on net? How do we look at it? So I, th I think we need to somehow take seriously the fact that consumption is not just what we measure, which is typically flow consumption, but also the consumption of the services and the durables. Now, if you ask me how to do that, that's a s it's not obvious, but it, it ne we need to somehow come up with welfare me measures that are sensitive to what's happening. Pursuing that point, um, the other place where I'm troubled is in this fact that you know everybody's businesses grow, but their incomes don't. Now, how can one, what's the welfare impact of that? They're working harder, presumably businesses grow, work, they're working harder. Should we we typically what we do is we don't value people's time uh, when we calculate profits because we don't really know how to value people's time because people don't work full time. But at some level we want to clearly, when we talk about welfare, 
we need to integrate the fact that for whatever good or bad reason, this is making people, you know, the loans are inducing people to do more stuff without getting much more back from it. And presumably that's bad news, but I don't know how much bad news. I, I just have, I think calibrating that would be important. So general point, we need better welfare measures. Otherwise, it's hard to, hard to know what, what's going on, given that we are sort of, the economic instinct is to sort of tell this whole narrative of many things happening and then look at, uh, look at either sort of consumption or self-reported well-being, both of which have their uh, deficiencies. And we, I think we need to be able to, I think part of where I feel like especially in a world where we want, to, we want to acknowledge that the impacts are complex and that some people benefit and some people lose out. Uh, how, how, do, how do we aggregate these things seems key. Um, and I feel like we need to, as economists and other social scientists involved in this, we, we need to do more about this. On the, on the inter interest elasticity point, that's sort of what's striking about that is I mean, it's, that's related to another fact that I mentioned briefly yesterday, and I think, which is that the take-up is surprisingly low. So if you think that most of these people are, you know, credit constrained and they want to do something with their, you know, they, there is, they have investment opportunities, they want to buy a television, there's, they are borrowing from the money lenders um, often. Given all that, the take-up rates we find among eligible people of 25% seems surprisingly low. Why? That's, uh, that's kind of related to this high interest elasticity. They seem to be basically acting as if they're not that constrained. So if they were very constrained, then you would think that any loan is better than no loan. And that's not how they're behaving. They're behaving as if, you know, a loan is, a, is an option. I could use it uh, for s something that I w w would be interesting to do, but maybe, maybe better not if the interest rate is too high or if the, uh, or, you know, even if the loan is available at fairly low interest rates, people don't seem to want these loans. And one of the things that's really puzzling to me is that that's a, in a world where many of these people have median level of borrowing in the baseline in our data was much more than the in the in the India data that I presented yesterday, the Spandana data, the median level of borrowing in the baseline was much higher than the loan size. So they were they had already borrowed much more than this loan would give them. So in that world, if we think that what they have are these very very um, kind of uh, onerous, high interest rate, micro uh, money lender loans, which they're carrying already, why aren't they all you know, running to the microfinance organization, taking the loan and paying them down? Some, some, what, what's, what's the reason why the, this interest elasticity is so high, in other words? And I think there again, it seems to me that uh, we, we are perhaps missing something, some of the welfare clues here. So I think Part of the reason why people don't love microfinance loans often is because they have a very strong structure, and people don't necessarily like the structure. So it's, you know, you have to go every week, meeting, pay, pay every week, be on, on some schedule. All of those things have welfare costs. We don't particularly think about them, but I think if we actually looked at the interest elasticity data and put them through a screen of of you know, what are the costs that are making people not take these loans, I suspect a lot of that inflexibility is the cost. So in some ways, in, again, going back to this question of welfare, when we want to assess what these loans do and don't do, I think it's very important to take seriously the idea that, uh, that uh, there, is, there is a significant amount of, of non-financial cost to taking microfinance loans. That's why not everybody wants them. That's why, uh, that's why, uh, that's why the interest elasticity is high. Now, having said that, I wouldn't want to ascribe, I wouldn't want to sort of put a, 
a model where I would just say that you know these loans are the micro the money lender loan and this loan is are perfect substitutes except for this whatever these meetings you have to go to in the weekly payment and then just sort of back out the implicit cost of these things. I think that would probably be misguided because I'm sure people also have all kinds of suspicions about new things and there's all kinds of other things in that story. But it would be very interesting to figure out actually what the welfare benefits are. You know, what, how, what costs are you imposing by having uh, the structures of microcredit, which obviously have value because they, they provide, uh, they help in may securing the loan, make, you know, the, the kind of routinization, the, the fact that it's small payments all the time. All of these things are, have value, they're costed in on the lender side. The lender's cost, the fact that I have to send someone to collect the money every week. The, on the borrower side, we don't cost them. So we have, don't really have a sense of actual the net welfare gain from all of this. We have, uh, I think, less sense than, than we think. So that's sort of my general bottom line on all, in all of this is that uh, it's, it's, these results are very interesting. And in some ways, they get to the point where I think we are, we are really hitting the uh, constraints on our intellectual framework. That we don't have a very good fa intellectual framework for kind of adding up these set of facts that seem to be coming out of, of, of this, this set of studies, which I think builds and very strongly complements what other studies have shown. Thank you.